You've been there. You've been in meetings that go on and on, constantly talking, discussing things, but never really getting things done. You've never been in a level 10 meeting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your meetings and how to do that in Asana. So stay tuned for that. A level 10 meeting is a weekly check-in meeting with your leadership team where attendees develop a strategy that they can hold themselves and their team accountable to. These team meetings are principally dedicated to solve issues and create an issues list of items that require attention. For those of you familiar with EOS, you may have heard of level 10 meetings before. They follow a very specific structure. They are intended to start on time, end on time, and take exactly 90 minutes. And the key to this is consistency in how they're organized and how people interact during the meeting. It starts with a check-in, followed by a scorecard review. Then we do a rock review, and a rock you can think of as a short-term goal or a three-month objective. Address some customer or employee headlines. Review the current to-do list what's outstanding and what's recently been completed, and then spend the majority of the meeting on something called IDS. That's identifying an issue, having a discussion, and then solving that issue. And then finally, there's a conclusion where you summarize the to-dos, you rate the meeting on a scale from one to 10, and you ensure everybody has their action items. So let's do this. Let's walk through how to do a level 10 meeting in Asana. In Asana, the way to do a level 10 meeting is to set up a meeting as a project. In Asana, what we do is we use templates. We create a template for a project. In our case, we have a level 10 meeting template. And on the screen, I've shared with you a leadership meeting that's following that template. The way we use this is because a level 10 meeting is supposed to be consistent, it happens the same time every week, repetitively, we can use the same project in Asana for every like meeting. For example, the weekly leadership team meeting will always use the same project in Asana. If you have a marketing meeting, it will have the marketing meeting project in Asana. If you have an operations meeting, you'll have an operations meeting project in Asana. In Asana, we use sections and tasks to organize the meeting. The first item on it is a milestone, and that's the meeting date. The meeting date is the date of the next meeting. So for example, when we arrive at the meeting, we'll change that date to the next meeting. So it'll always have the following meeting date, so you'll know it's coming up. Also, what's great about this is in Asana, there is an audit trail of every time something changes. So you'll have a history of every meeting date. So for example, if you had your leadership team, you'd know just by looking at the history of the meeting date each time you conducted it. We start the meeting on time and then we move into our segue. And the segue is really more of a check-in. We ask each participant to briefly share a personal and professional accomplishment in the past week. We start the meeting with a win and it, it sets a positive tone for that meeting. So that's why we do this segue. It's we wanna set a positive tone for how we're starting the meeting. And as you can see from the segue in Asana, it's a section, it's not a task. We can now move on to the next part. That's the scorecard. We use the five minutes dedicated to the scorecard to update the weekly scorecards or metrics for each attendee. Each attendee has numbers that they're accountable for. During this level 10 meeting, they're going to go through those numbers and report those to the team. In our case, we use Microsoft Teams. What we will do for each attendee, we will review the scorecard in Microsoft Teams. As we review the scorecard, if there's anything that's a concern, that's immediately added to the issues list. The next five minutes is dedicated to the rock review. Now in EOS, it has its own vernacular, and there's this thing they call rocks. And what rocks are, well, those are short-term goals. They're three-month goals. They're goals that you need to accomplish. And if you think of the analogy about how you fill a jar, you start with the big rocks first, then the medium rocks, then the smaller rocks, then you put the sand in, or then you put the water in. And that's how you can completely fill it, starting with the big rocks. 
Same analogy applies here. We call them rocks. But what we're doing during this meeting is we're doing a rock review. And what we can see here is for each rock, we'll have an owner. And that owner is going to report the status of that rock. If there are issues, we'll take those issues at this time and put them in the issues list for this level 10 meeting. The other thing we do is, again, this is an Asana, so we use Asana as a tool here. We will use tags in Asana for all rocks. That way they're easily searchable or they can be viewed in different ways later on or in other projects or by other people. After our rock review, we move on to the customer and employee headlines. During the customer employee headlines, we share client and employee feedback with the rest of the team. It's really just a short one sentence, good or bad kind of indication. There's not really a discussion here. It's five minutes sharing information that everyone needs to know about different clients, customers, or team members. And if something is brought to the attention of the group that is an issue, at this point, it's also added to the issues list. Our next five minutes is dedicated to the to-do list. Each team member either says what they've done or not done or if an item is in progress. Now, since we're using Asana here, each team member is going to have these to-do list items in their task list when they're working in Asana. For to-dos associated with level 10 meetings, what we do is we don't mark that task complete when it's actually completed. Instead, what we'll do is we'll use a tag marking that it's a finished task. This way, the task still shows up in the to-do list for the next level 10 meeting. It's only during the level 10 meeting do we actually mark those tasks complete. The idea here is that somebody is working an item in their to-do list. They complete it and they tag it. And then they save that so that they can report it during the meeting. And so we can keep track of everything that was completed in the prior week between the two level 10 meetings. Now mostly what we've been doing is reporting and in some cases logging issues. The next section of the meeting is where the meat of the meeting is. This is what we call IDS, Issue, Discuss, Solve. We may already have some issues in the list. We're also going to go around, talk to each other, and come up with other issues. Each person's going to mention issues pertinent to the, this group of people, whether it's the leadership team or the marketing team or the sales team or the operations team. Issues come up in this meeting and we get those logged so that we can discuss them. We prioritize these issues, and in order of priority, we begin a discussion one by one. During the discussion, we discuss the issue. Collectively, we work to solve it. Typically, the solution to the issue creates another to-do. And in Asana, we'll add an item underneath the to-do list and assign that to an owner. Then we'll continue to IDS and continue to work through the issues until we've met the time limit. We've allocated 60 minutes in the 90 minute meeting for IDS, but we end it when we've hit that 60 minutes, even if we haven't covered any issue, every issue. And that's because we have to be strict about the time we use. But that's also why we make sure to order the issues and do them in order of priority. After all, if we're just dealing with trivial issues, we're not really moving things forward, but if we're focusing on the issues directly associated with the rocks we're trying to accomplish in the next three months, then we're typically focusing on the important issues, not necessarily the urgent ones. Now in the final section of the level 10 meeting agenda, we recap the to-do list and we identify the next steps from the meeting. We want to make sure everybody knows what they owe. We do something called cascading messages, which is messages that need to be delivered to other team members. So, so if this is a leadership team meeting, you may have to have members of that leadership team deliver messages to others in the organization. We call those cascading messages. That cascading message will usually result in another to-do assigned to a person in that meeting. And finally, we always rate the meeting on a scale from one to 10. Each attendee required to rate that. In Asana, what we do is we actually add the rating directly into the description and save that. We put the person's name and their score and we save it. And then we update that each time and that will show up in the history of this task in Asana. And that's it. Then we conclude our meeting on time, every time, and we have a clear way to organize it using tools 
already in our organization. Our project management and task management tools are used to manage our level 10 meetings and help move our rocks or our big goals forward. So let's revisit some of the pros of these level 10 meetings. They keep the team aligned on goals. By focusing on our business goals and the most important challenges that the organization is facing once a week, our team are going to stay focused and productive. It's hard to forget what the business objectives are and which goals you're working towards when there's a meeting every single week. The level 10 meeting serves as a constant reminder of what we need to resolve so that we can move on to the next obstacle and the business can thrive. It also allows us to focus on our team's issues. The purpose of a level 10 meeting is to discuss team issues. It's not often that we are dedicate a whole hour to issue resolution, so we make sure we take advantage of it. And we can really dive deep into the issues that the team is facing so that we can calibrate and strategize a means to mitigate problems and alleviate complications on the way to achieving our goals. And the level 10 meeting is always at the same time. It's obvious, but a bit noteworthy. Having a strictly time-capped meeting like this is going to keep all of us focused on resolving issues. It's because there's a time limit, each person is pushed to be concise and to the point, with only enough time to communicate pressing and important information. Now, I mentioned some pros, and there are some cons. After all, these meetings, they require facilitation. There needs to be a person who is responsible for running these meetings successfully and keeping them on track and on time. And it requires preparation. A person going to a level 10 meeting has something to report and they need to prepare in advance for this meeting. And it takes, it takes extra work, it takes us extra hustle. And it also requires some manual processes because we are going to use Asana for this, but there are some other things outside where we may have to manually update that. For example, some scorecards may have manual components that have to be updated before the level 10 meeting so that they can be shared by that team member in that meeting. I hope this was helpful. Whether you've never heard of EOS or level 10 meetings before, or you're an active EOS participant and just curious how Asana can help, I hope you got something out of this video. I produce videos like this every week on business, marketing, and personal development. If you found it interesting, I'd appreciate a like or a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, subscribe and click the bell. If you have different ways that you use Asana for level 10 meetings, I'd love to hear that. Put that, put that in the comments. Thanks for your time today. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.